I think we're ready. So I believe I'm the caboose on this DART Summit excitement train. My name is Eric Seidel. I am here to talk to you about Sky, which is an experimental project going on at the moment. But I could talk to you a lot about Sky. I'd rather show you Sky. So for today, I built a demo and I published on the Android Play Store. It's available, Sky Demo, you can download it. Give it a second while it warms up on this new device. Uh, so what you see here, whoops, I got to hit input too. What you see here, see this is exciting mobile live demos. It's too bright and it's blown out the screen. Um, there we go. Oh, much better. What you see here, yeah, it doesn't look super exciting. The exciting part is that there is no Java drawing this. This is drawn by Dart. I'll show you the very first demo that we brought up in this harness and gets to the point. Uh, this is just a square spinning, but driving this device at 60 hertz from Dart. And that is one of the first goals that we had for the system was to be fast and responsive. We want to go way past 60 hertz, but that's what this device can do. Another demo that we brought up early is this touch demo, which shows our integration with the underlying Android, shows pressure sensitivity, does multi-touch, sticks to my finger while well, the device does too, <laughs> etc. And an even more recent demo is this sucker. This is all loaded down off the network, by the way. This is Dart code running off the network, which shows us scrolling at 60 hertz. Ooh, not so good on the camera. Shows us drawers. Again, you can try this on your own phone, and you can feel it. It feels much smoother than the camera can display. Integrates with the Android keyboard, including the voice keyboard, if you're so inclined. It's got menus, buttons, splashes. Again, all the things you would expect of a UI framework. So that's demos. Let's, uh, let's go back to the magical video one. Oh, man. Now I guess I get to change my password. So, this is what we're talking about today. This is the sky architecture. So here, all the green stuff, which sort of looks green, is your Dart code, is Dart code. And all the gray or purple, as it looks on this display, is other languages. So here, your UI is written in Dart along with any Dart-related business logic that you may or may not have, and the Sky Framework. The Sky Framework and the Sky Engine are what we're going to be talking about today. And then we have this cross-language messaging system, which is basically Chrome's messaging system, distilled down. It's called Mojo. Distilled down for doing fast uh, cross-process, cross-language messaging to any native APIs that are available on the system, and any business logic you might have in other languages, be it you know, C-sharp, Objective-C, whatever you got. So what are we doing here? Well, Sky is here all about providing a better mobile experience. A better experience for users, a better experience for developers. We are here to take the lessons. My team, many of my team have worked on the web for over a decade. And we're here to take the lessons from working on the web and try and do something better for mobile. Because we look around at the current development options and just believe we could do a lot better. So what are our goals? Well, our first goal is performance. When we set out to do this, we came from years of trying to make the mobile web work better. And the number one complaint we got from developers is it's just not fast enough. It doesn't stick to my user's finger. It doesn't feel like a mobile expected app should feel. So we're here to do performance, high performance in Sky. We also believe in being platform agnostic. The Previous versions of this engine called Blink, called WebKit, have been ported to every platform under the sun. And Sky maintains that same level of portability in its C++ code, as well as, of course, Dart, which runs anywhere the Dart VM can run. Sky offers no opinion as to what you can or can't do with your app. Anything the OS lets you do, Sky is there to help you. Again, through those Mojo IPC layer. 
we believe that the current development cycles of recompile, reinstall, reoptimize was far superior in web browsers. And so we have taken a page out of those books, out of that book, and built another edit refresh cycle for Sky as well. We believe in network first. One of the powers of web-based development is that you can deploy once and all your users have the same version of your app right away. Or you can do A-B testing, uh, things that mobile is just getting to. Uh, we have URLs at the base layer of our system. Everywhere in our system understands that, that the network is a thing. Um, we also, <clears throat> of course, believe that your app should look the way you, you want your app to look. So we're here to provide you not only our built-in powerful layout primitives, but also provide you the ability to rewrite your own in whatever you want your app to look like. So we have, in fact, taken the step of removing the layout code from our C++ and rewriting it in Dart. So if we can write it in Dart, you can express whatever layout you want in Dart as well. Same for Paint. And of course, all the gorgeous text that you would expect from something that came from the web heritage. All the right to left, left to right, ligatures. I think I'm still with you all. Anyways, my real point here today is because we are such an early stage project, is to hear from you. We believe that we're creating something better for mobile. And you know, someone was joking with me before this session. They were like, well, you could replace your session with a Q&A about people and what they hate about mobile. Because that's what I'm here to learn from you, is what you've had trouble with in mobile, because we want to make it better. So let's get back to the demos, because those are fun. And let's write ourselves some Hello World, shall we? So one of the things that I tried to do for this talk was to make Sky feel very familiar to a Dart developer. So to start a Sky project, we just make their Hello World. And then we all know our lovely pub spec. So we type a pub spec. I've typed a couple of these in my day. Hello world, dependencies, sky, any. Yeah. And then I pub git. And that's it. I now have everything I need to write a Sky app, including the stuff to put it on Android. It's just there, on my machine. And so now if I want to keep typing Dart code, I make a lib directory, because that's what pub likes. Set up the symlinks. Lib main.dart. And I always miss a semicolon, so we're going to copy from our readme. We were going to copy from our README. That's fine. We'll do it on the fly. Hello world. My colleagues in the back of the room are cringing that I forgot something. So lib. Oh, sorry. OK, and we have one more piece that we got to type. Wow, Chrome has completely lost its mind. Who works on this product? <laughs> I did for many, many years. OK. Um, OK, one more piece of boilerplate that we need in order to placate the Sky Engine, which comes from Chrome, is that we need an HTML-like file to kick it off. So we're going to put that at the root of our directory, directory vim, uh, main.sky. OK? Oops, fix our package name. Hello world. And the semicolon that I even forgotten to read me. It's okay, we got this. Packages, sky. All right, so now how the heck do we get this thing on the device? Well, again, I told you the whole thing comes down from pub. So we include a little tool called the sky tool. And we start start. And what this is going to do is it's going to run an HTTP server on my machine, serve my package straight to my device, and Tell the device, hey, load this thing. So let's see if it works. Oh, I probably didn't pub get enough times. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. <laughs> no. 
Uh, well, the phone was not plugged in. <laughs> the man in the back of the, there we go. So now we've, we've started up. And we turn on number two. Oh, so we see it. We see Hello World. <laughs> Except we drew Hello World behind the status bar which is probably not what we meant to do. But I'll tell you, this is both good and bad. Um, it's good because in Sky, you get full control. Full control over the screen, full control over anything you can access in the OS. It's bad because you obviously don't want to draw behind the status bar, or maybe not right, for this example, right? So that's where the framework comes in. The Sky framework helps, it helps you know, well, oh, I'm on Android. It has a status bar. I guess I should indent things, you know, yada, yada, yada. So let's talk about the Sky framework. So, Sky Framework. Remember that was this thing? Oops, hello. <laughs> I hit number one, was that wrong? Number four. <laughs> I'll take a projector for number four, okay. So door number four tells us that the Sky, I'm sorry, we're talking about the Sky Framework, written in Dart. That's this piece of the puzzle, okay? So what is that piece of the puzzle for? Well, that piece of the puzzle is, is a big bag of widgets to start with. All written in Dart, all replaceable. We're writing to Google's material, well, what I believe is beautiful material design spec, which the Android uh, OS also somewhat follows. Um, the other job of the framework is to help guide your app towards being jank free. Uh, all the, we are slowly removing the blocking APIs from the engine side of things. And in the framework, we're also not introducing blocking APIs so that you don't miss those frames. You don't block the main thread. You are always responsive to the user's input. Another way that we help you do that is by separating out the pieces. So you do your layout at layout time, your paint at paint time, your process input at process input time. It allows us to overlap these. It allows us to make sure, to, to interrupt these. It allows us to, again, make sure you always hit that frame. And finally, one note about the framework is that it is in a functional reactive style, which you see also with the framework that Casper just demoed. Uh, and other modern frameworks that are being you know, experimented with. So let's do something with the framework, shall we? So given how well that first round of typing was, I think I'm going to skip straight to my backups. We'll go to our, you know what, we can do this in Sublime. We can go to the 21st century. So inside my backups, I have already typed out an example. And the part that changed is this main.dart file. Sorry, now we have color. Uh, but the big thing that changed, remember it was just Dart Sky before, or sorry, we just imported this package framework, FN Dart. Now we import a bit more of the framework. We still extend our app. You can ignore this little style bit. I'll start, talk about that in a second. We still have a build method. But the new piece is that we now have a scaffold. And the scaffold is the opinionated piece of the framework that says, hey, I'm on iOS, or I'm on Android. I bet I have a status bar. I shouldn't draw there, etc." cetera. Uh, it also has an an action bar, which is a material design concept for the thing at the top with the name and the little like hot dog for the, the menu, etc. And here we're just putting hello world and a little text in our page. So let's run this simple app on our phone again. Have to be in backup widgets. And we switch to number two and pray. That is not right. That is not. That is still not. I guess we will try. Um, Sorry, folks. I have caused something to be confused. I need the man in the back of the room again. Or maybe this is why you don't do mobile live demos. <laughs> yep, 
you know, when it doesn't work on one phone, you take one of the other three phones that you brought forward with you. I'm sorry? You know, I only have the one terminal open, so I would think not. But anything is possible. Ta-da! It was just the phone. Oh, sorry. It looks green to me. So, okay, well, moving to that phone is, might make the rest of this a little more complicated. So you know what? We're actually going to move back. And then I'm going to show you the next feature, which is the fact, you know that I talked before about how silly it was this compile, install, optimize cycle, and then you see me doing it, right? I come back to my terminal every time. It's silly. So I don't want to do that. So I don't want to do that. And so I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to just reinstall. Remember I told you that everything came along with? Everything really does come along with. All right, well, I'm giving up on that phone. Sorry. All right, we're going back. We're going to go to a different part of the demo. So the next thing I was going to show you is that I could shake to reload. But since I'm on a tablet, this thing doesn't have an accelerometer, and it cannot shake to reload. So I will show you how to do that, but you're going to have to try it yourself. Because again, all this is on the Play Store. You can play with it yourself. Uh, the one piece of this widgets one demo that I didn't show you was in this main.sky. I added an import here. I added an import here, which imports another piece of the framework that loads another small piece of Dart code, which again we can see because it's in the framework. And this little piece of Dart code listens to an Android sensor. And when the sensor changes, it decides whether you're shaking or not. And then issues a reload on the screen. Now, how exactly it talks to the Android sensor is a detail better covered in our readmes. Because the way that this uses is it uses that Mojo IPC system that I was talking about before. And this is you know, 40 lines of code here. It's another 20 lines of code in the Mojom to specify how it wants to talk to the API. And then it's another 40 lines of Java, mostly to parrot what the Android system says back to the Mojom. Uh, so it's a very small amount of code to expose the shaking, uh, to expose the Android sensors. But this is how we do shake to reload, which unfortunately I cannot demo because the, the tablet doesn't support it. So uh, the last and final thing that I want to demo, since my demos are having so much luck, is I want to demo a slightly more complicated use of this framework. Because right now, all we've done is we've drawn some pretty text to the screen, right? We could do something a little more interactive. So we're going to back up and go to widgets 2. And we'll load this sucker up. And I'll switch screens. You know, I'm going to be a pro at pushing these buttons here pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to be a pro, especially if it actually works. You know, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Now, the cannot remove listener is, is some other silliness. I, I don't know what to tell you. This is, this is what doing demos live on stage with mobile is going to get you. But I'm going to show you instead. So what we were going to do is we were going to build a button. Okay? And so if you look down at our build method, before we just had this scaffold and this action bar, here we were adding another container in the content, and we were adding two buttons, and event listeners around each button. And these event listeners listen to the pointer up, and they call this same method that we defined above to say hello or say goodbye. And this same method, what it does is it's mostly just a setter for this greeting variable that we have. But it also calls this set state, which lets the underlying framework know, hey, I'm changing my state in my data model. You better ask me again if you want to display. And so before the next frame comes up, it calls build. So you know I can try sending it one more time. But 
This is why you're not shipping things on Sky today. And uh, we'll have better demos next time. Anyways, before we're completely done with the demo section, I do want to talk a little bit about tooling. Because one of the things that we learned in our very long time of working on the web is if you want to make the darn thing fast, you need to have tools to understand how. And so thankfully we built lots of tools in those years. And because we come from that, that world, we have brought forward those tools. And so I wanted to show you one of these. So if we say, pull up our good old spinning square again. Yep, I'll switch to the screen just a second. Uh, if we pull up our spinning square again, do you know what the spinning square looks like? But I want to actually prove to myself, is that hitting every frame? Well, I can tell you. If we go back to our little screen, we go to this, and we do start tracing. And now it's tracing on the device. If I do stop tracing, it downloads a little trace. And if we go back to our web browser, and we go to about tracing, and we click load. So this is Chrome's about tracing functionality, which is used for understanding web pages. But we also wired up the Sky Engine to be able to spit out compatible trace files. So we go to the Sky Trace, and huzzah, you see a lot of lines. The interesting part, so those little orange lines, which you may not be able to see very well, these. Those are the V-Syncs. And you can see from this area is just empty. We are doing the entire work of rendering that, that frame in 1.2 milliseconds. Obviously, we're not rendering very much. But the idea is that we have tons of space on this simple example. We could show you slightly more complicated, which would also have tons of space. And you could dive into this on your own time. Uh, but the idea here is that we have the tools to understand. And you have the tools to understand how to make your apps fast. So let's go back, and I want to show you one more tool which should be very familiar to this crowd, which is not only do we get all the Chrome tools, but we get all the Dart tools. And so as of this last weekend, it is now possible also with the spinning square to, if I just forward one little port, the observatory port, I just forwarded the port, oh, hello, localhost. I just forwarded the port from the device to my machine. I am now connecting to observatory on the device from my laptop. And so I can click. I can click on the spinning square. And honestly, I'm not a super amazing observatory guru yet because it just came online for us. But I can set a breakpoint. And if I go back to my screen, I've stopped the square. <laughs> so I can now go back to my other screen. <laughs> and we can go, whoops, we can go back to this one, to the debugger. And you know, I can hit C a couple times, and I can see the square is turning. Uh, you can't. But well, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I can also do things like P square style, background, color. This part's all going away. We're, re we're rewriting the style system as we speak. Orange. And then remove my, well, I don't need to remove my breakpoint, but I can just hit continue. Ah. Ta-da! In any case, Observatory doesn't work on the one that's on the Play Store, but the next version I push it will. Uh, so, because that, that came in 11th hour for this conference. But you can see, you get the Chrome tools, you get the Dart tools. It's paradise, right? Anyways, that's most of what I wanted to tell you today. Uh, I want to thank you all. Oh, screen. 
I want to thank you all for listening. Again, we're super early stage. My goal here is, again, to solicit your feedback. So I brought my entire team. They're sitting in the back. And we will gladly field your questions. Please come talk to us. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, please reach out. There's our GitHub URL. There's our mailing list. Thank you very much. If you'd like to do a couple of questions, you've got a few minutes. OK. I have time for some questions, if anybody has any. Hey, uh, Kevin, give him the microphone. What? <laughs> Question is, are you exposing all the OpenGL calls to Dart? So we have currently removed the WebGL wrapper uh, from that you might have expected from a browser. So we don't have WebGL. Uh, one could expose. If there's a Dart library on Pub already that does GL, we could certainly implement that. Uh, but I think that th there's a question that I have to ask myself is if I want to write WebGL, where do I want to write it? In this system, I don't need to write it in Dart. I don't need to write it in Sky. I could take my existing C++ OpenGL. So I guess the short answer to your question is we don't currently. We could if that's important to you. Mm -hmm. Sure. If somebody's written a GLES API bindings for Dart, we certainly could expose those, yes. We aren't today. Got time for maybe one more. How will Sky work in iOS? So Sky doesn't today work in iOS. But the engine itself is portable, and the VM is portable, as you heard Casper talking about. So the, the constraints are different. In that ecosystem, there are some, you know, you sign different agreements to play on that phone. Uh, based on those agreements that you may or may not sign, um, the technology choices may be, need to be slightly differently, but we will cross those bridges. Thank you. Thank you.